Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation with tangents. We have tangent x multiplied by tangent of x plus 1, and that equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to go ahead and turn tangent into sine over cosine. Because as you should know, if you've done a little bit of trigonometry, we can write tangent as sine over cosine. Pretty much every function can be written uh, in trigonometry as a function of sine or cosine or both. You know, and sine and cosine are related by the Pythagorean identity, which is very, very important. So if you replace tangent x with sine x over cosine x, and then tangent x plus 1 with sine of x plus 1 over cosine of x plus 1, and the product is equal to 1. Now, if this product was equal to something else besides 1, like 1 half or 2 or square root of 3, that would be a completely different story. But because it's 1, we can use the first method thanks to the problem. So notice that we're going to multiply the numerators and the denominators and then it's going to equal 1, so the numerator at the end will equal the denominator. So in other words, we can write this as cosine of x plus 1. I'm just going to switch terms around a little bit to make it nicer. These two will equal these two, right? But I want to write the x plus 1 first, which I'm going to show you. Actually, here I could probably, well, I don't think it matters that much. So anyways, these two things are equal, and now I'm going to put them on the same side because I'm about to use an awesome identity. I hope you're familiar with that, and if not, I'm going to show you what it is. But first, I'm going to put everything on the same side, set it equal to zero, and then if you know that cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta is equivalent to cosine of alpha plus beta, then you'll be good to go. So this identity allows us, and by the way, notice that this minus sign is countered by this plus sign with the sign, like S-I-N, the sign of an angle, the same formula is plus to plus and minus to minus. So if you change this to plus sign, this will be changed to minus sign. You get the idea? It's opposite. So now if you apply it here, then you should be getting something like this. Cosine of x plus 1 plus x. So we're adding these two things. Make sense? And of course, that's a single cosine. And it's equal to 0. That's the best part. Now, this means cosine of 2x plus 1, we're adding like terms, is equal to 0. And just think about the cosine of which angle is 0. Well, you're going to find two angles. One of them is pi over 2. The other one is negative pi over 2, or you can express it as 3 pi over 2, depending, depending on how you look at it. But you can start at pi over 2 and then just add multiples of pi to it. That's going to be your period because 2 pi is the normal period, but you divide by that. And you probably know that by graphing sine, cosine, or trigonometric functions, which is kind of like an annoying topic. I don't like graphing, but anyways, you have to learn it, right? We all had to. So now uh, we can safely say that 2x plus 1, whose cosine is 0, can equal pi over 2 plus n pi. Notice our period is pi, so I have to add multiples of pi, not multiples of 2 pi, just like because for normal um, cosine functions, you're supposed to add that. But instead of writing two separate solutions, I'm just going to stick with one, which is better. And of course, our goal is to solve for x. I mean, what else can you solve for, right? That's the only thing you can solve for pretty much. So let's go ahead and do this. Subtract 1. And then we're going to divide everything by 2. But before we do, let's go ahead and make a common denominator. Now, this can be done in so many different ways, by the way. You can include the pies. You can put the pies together. You can make a common denominator for the whole thing. Again, it can be done in so many ways. But I'm just going to keep it like that. And this will become pi, over, pi minus 2 over 4 plus n pi over 2. Again, you can make a common denominator if you want. But don't forget, n is an integer, positive or negative, right? So that, those are the solutions. And with the second method, we're going to go look at some 
specific solutions. That's why I'm not going to do that right now. We don't need to really uh, repeat it. But that's basically the general solution where n is an integer. Uh, this is going to give you a solution. This was kind of like a sort of like a non-standard trigonometric equation, I think, because normally trigonometric equations are usually have sine sine on either side or sine cosine, so on and so forth. But this was a little different because it was the product of two tangents and the product is equal to one, which means it's a special case, which allows us to use method one. I just want to bring, you know, get your attention on this one, because when we do the second method, you're going to see what I'm talking about, because the second method is something that can be applied in general. That's what's good about it. So here's the thing. We have tangent x multiplied by tangent x plus 1 equals 1. That's the original problem, right? We always have to get back to square 1. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by tangent x. So that's that'll isolate tangent x plus 1. And that's going to equal 1 over tangent x. Again, using our trigonometric identity superpowers, what is 1 over tangent x? Cotangent x. Because tangent and cotangent are cofunctions, but at the same time, they are reciprocals. It's kind of funny that the sine and cosine are cofunctions, but not reciprocals. It just had to be that way. Anyway, so tangent x plus 1 equals cotangent. We got a tangent on one side of the equation and cotangent on the other. Can we solve this equation? Yes, but we need to do a little bit of touch, a trigonometric touch. We'll turn cotangent x into tangent of pi over 2 minus x, because if two angles are complementary, then this works. Think about x and pi over 2 minus x. Their sum is pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees, which means tangent of one of the angles is equal to the cotangent of the other angle. So we're allowed to write this, which is awesome because we do have now tangent on both sides, which you can untan or I mean arc tangent, right? And then that'll give you the following. x plus 1 can be written as pi over 2 minus x plus what's the period for tangent function? pi. So we're going to add n pi again. If you want to use a different integer like k, that's totally fine, but it doesn't matter because it's just a dummy variable. No offense, n, okay? You're just a variable, okay? The next thing we're going to do is don't subtract one from both sides, bring the x's together first. So I'm going to add x to both sides and then subtract one. Of course, we can do it at the same time because we're smart, right? Better than most um, large language models, at least at this point, like Wolfram Alpha, anyways. So that's my daily rant on from Alpha. And from here, we're going to get the same solution. But I'm going to go a little more specific here because we didn't do that with the first method. And I told you that I was going to do it. Again, did I say n is an integer? I did, I think. But let me write it as well because some people complain, oh, we didn't know n was an integer. Yes, you did. So the rest is pretty much the same. But, you know, uh, we're just going to divide by 2, obviously. Right? And then you can do whatever you want. But I'm going to show you some specific solutions. For example, if n is equal to 0, x is equal to pi minus 2 over 4. So if you think about pi is about 3.14, roughly, then you're going to get 1.14 divided by 4. You know, you're going to get something like 0 0.7 something something. So it's a decimal, but you got to remember it's in radians. But yes, that's a solution to our equation. And you can always check, plug it into the original problem and you know, just substitute and you're going to get the idea. n equals 1 gives us x equals pi over pi minus 2 over 4 plus pi over 2. Again, you can bring the pi's together if you want. 2 pi plus pi is going to be 3 pi minus 2 over 4. So you can kind of get a pattern from here. Maybe it's going to be like pi minus 2 over 4, 3 pi minus 2 over 4, 5 pi minus 2 over 4, so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.